Welcome back, everybody, ahead of game two, Axes versus the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks Gaming. And Alexi, as we were discussing off-broadcast, for all intents mm. and purposes, this game could give us a really strong hint about which team takes the last playoff spot. Oh, I mean, absolutely. This is... Okay, White Wolf. Uh, so, to set the stage for everybody, at this moment in time, Axis won their first match versus the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks Gaming, meaning that they already currently have the 1 and O versus them. So, let's just talk about it from a just blanket statement. Axis and Hawks, at reasonable, it's reasonable to expect they could tie at the end of all around Robins. The problem is, head-to-heads get worked out by their current tiebreakers. Triple round robin means, obviously, one of these teams will have a two to one record over the other, meaning that they auto qualify. If Axis win this, they will have a default two and O, oh, which will then force the Hawks to play the rest of the round robin, knowing that they have to be Axis and also whatever score they end on. Meaning that well and truly, at this moment in time, it looks like V3 Esports might already be out of contention if scores and games go expected and DFM beat everybody. And that's one of those teams because we've got so many teams in that kind of sandwich of the X and positive. They are just positive in the win-loss record, meaning that these lower teams, any and every win is so important to them. And if Hawks don't win here, they might not make playoffs. Just full stop. It's terrifying, Brit uh, Brackish, if you're like me and you are putting Hawks at number one at the end of the spring split. Oh... You're not going to live that down for a while, are you? I didn't live down 2020 still. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're, we're doubling down with my love and devotion for the Hawks. I mean, that's at the very least, that's respectable. Uh, Tashka, I was going to jump to you because we've got an interesting spot for Axis because we now don't know which of their two top laners they're going to run. Mm. Into Kanatu, who, theoretically, extremely good top laner, but as you were saying, he's not really been allowed to play the way he wants to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kanadu is mostly defaulting into those split push champions, but at least whenever I watch Hawks games, and especially the one that me and Lexi casted against uh, Quest Gaming, like that was, he's yeah. just not allowed to split push for some reason. He built Holebreaker. Well, that. Wait, no, Holebreaker never saw our next match. Cool. Yeah, he built Holebreaker. Yeah. He sent to a sideline and then groups with the team. And I'm just sat here thinking, why? We, yeah. we couldn't figure that out, mate. With, with all our research, but, we couldn't figure out Brackish. We're, we're still trying to figure out why. Scholar, yep, scholars working for decades have yet to figure <laughs> out why the man is not allowed to just do his thing on the side lane. But looking across to Axis, we have this option. Is it going to be Yellow Yoshi? Is it going to be told to? We really do not know. And, well, we will not know until we get into draft, pretty much, who they're going to put into this matchup. And... I I wonder if Kanatu is gi actually given the license to do what he wants to do, could he just hard stomp one of these lanes? Probably not. Actually, probably yeah. not against yes. Yoshi. Yeah. I haven't seen Toltu. So, but I so, feel like Kanatu, if given, yes, go, 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 just go for it, go for it. I'm gonna go for it because Yellow Yoshi is their tank player because he's a Poppy main, so he is a tank player, and he play he does play Julian Poppy in solo queue. But we all know in competitive play, he would do the smart build, and you just go full tank, and just all of Kanatsu's uh, way of burning through champions with like Hullbreaker and uh, Death, uh, no Black Cleavers and everything else. That would be the direction he would go with. Yellow Yoshi would be theoretically able to nullify, or he can just do his smite stuff, and just that's how you also nullify a player like Kanatsu who can just win a one v one. I don't think Toltu's coming out, and the reason I say that sadly is he is a big, dueling, brawling, 1v1 machine. He is not good enough, in my opinion, to beat Kanatsu. Kanatsu was an MVP caliber performance player in Scouting Grounds. He had a rookie performance that was won him rookie of the split in the LGL OU, and on the official stream as well. Coming into this, it is a huge bar for Toltu to try and 1v1 the man that solo killed Ebi in his opening game of the LJL. Nobody else has done that really as a rookie, well, yet to see more. Kanatsu did it, though. Yeah, that's it's kind of one of those big accolades. It's yeah. probably not going to happen for uh, like for 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 a while. Like, when's the next solar eclipse? I I don't know. That's that's that's, that's mm. that feels like the like Aria killing levels. Faker at Worlds was that last one that we had. That was really yeah, it, mate. exactly. It doesn't happen often, but we take those every single time. It... Thinking about Hawks. I know that you're. This is actually an angle you're against, 
Lexi, and I want to I want to hear your thoughts on it in detail. Now, Megamin, we can definitely say has oh. not been one of the most sadly has not been one of the most impressive mid laners, and Dasher, numerically at least, has been the best player for the Hawks. No, stats-wise, absolutely. Megumin is not having great performances, and if you look at it, he's kind of very much a sacrificial lamb. But that's kind of the role he's playing. He is that sacrificial lamb. If you've got Swamp with turn one thought seizing every opponent every single time and knowing their exact jungle path, and you've got Sangju, who is maybe the best imported player this split when you consider all the imports we've had. He's competing against Yaharong and Harp. Honestly, the kind of performances this player's having in the bot lane, yeah, he's kind of keeping Axis on float in a lot of spots and doing his best honey impression. I've been really impressed with him. And Mega Min is just playing around these two players. It's really sad he's not playing as brawlers, so we're not getting what we want to see. On the other side though, Dasher, yeah, his stats look phenomenal. Like, Actually phenomenal. Pre-15, he looks like maybe one of the best mid laners. Stats only tell half the story though, ladies and gentlemen. And while I think he's getting a lot of resources at this moment in time, I don't think he's actually converting it into actually sharing it and distributing it up to the rest of the team. And part of the issue is, let's be real, Dasher forces Kanatsu to group up. They have these 5v5s and then Hawks don't win them. So they need to try something else in my opinion. And gentlemen, we have a revelation. Mm. Toltu will be starting. No Yellow Yoshi this game. It is going mm. to potentially be a brawl fest in the top lane with Toltu against Kanatu. Your face says the story to me, Lexi. You do not seem happy with this choice. Yeah, but Cash, I'll let you take this because we did discuss I... this in detail. Yeah, I... I... Right, so... Tall 2 is, well, I mean, he played X-Challenge Raven. I feel like that is literally all you need to know. Well, I need to know, I'd say, you know, Monkey Brain play by playcaster about this uh, top laner. And, uh, In his last game, he went, what, 1-8 and eight on Draven? I, I mean, to, to be was... fair, he got, he got camped, but he did. why couldn't that happen again? Well, actually, I will put an asterisk in that. Uh, what we are going to see is probably a full-out brawl, 1v1, and... I don't know if he can stop Kanadu. Like, usually you just want to... Like, I, I will kind of... Sorry to reiterate the point I was already on the desk. If you want to really stop Kanadu, you have to just take a 1v1 away from him or just straight up beat him at that. And uh, unless Toltu has, like, some massive, you know, proving moment, um, then mm. that might not really happen. And that just gives Hawks an avenue to play through, which is not something they usually find in most of their games. Yeah, they don't tend to play around topside too much, but there is no reason that you could not ju like, just send blank top, get Kinatu ahead, let Kinatu just win the game no, no, for no. you. No, no, crackish, because we can't have blank doing anything, though. He, <laughs> yeah. he, he must do a full clear tip pre-six. Must always full clear until he gets six, and then he can start doing things around the map. At this point, he should just play Shyvana. Just say... You know what? I'm actually in. I'm. I'm on. I'm in line with you, mate. Literally, yeah. Literally, she is. A, she is a farm to six champion, and then it's literally gank whenever your rage bar is full. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm that okay is, with that. This is why I love Shavana. This is why I will bring her up whenever I have an opportunity to. Because you, oh, you found I, the angle where I'll agree with you. I, I appreciate as that. As a silver one, as a silver one jungle main, all right. I like having hard and fast rules for when I need to gank. So I can just be like, in Champions Life, all right, guys, I'm not ganking until six. Don't gank till six. And then just every time that little bar underneath my health is red, just jump at somebody. And we are now into pick and ban. So enough of me talking about champions that are probably not playable. And yeah, let's jump into draft, guys. Take it away. All right, let's see what we are going to see. I mean, Shivana would be interesting, but... I, don't I, want, I want to make it. Thank you so much to Brackish, though, for that. <laughs> I, I want it. I want it now. Oh, I kind of do as well, but we will have access on the blue side with Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gaming. On the red side, the first bands, Karma, Gwen, and Renata is going to be taken away, and then Zeri, Hecarim, Trindamir. Mummy got banned. I'm I'm sad. I, I'm sorry, I have to. I had to mention it. I've played this champion a few times. She seemed 
absolutely busted. Um, and I love the fact that we're getting new champions and it's a support and she's kind of doing very different things from a support role, has a different personality and actually has a really wicked skin. Yeah, anyway, um, okay, so first rotation, Jinx of Felios is still open, I, that's what we're going to have to be expecting, obviously, Dueling Junglers is probably going to come out, obviously, Hecram has been banned away, you can go for an Udia, I'm not a fan of it, so you can play Lee Sin if you really want to, obviously, though, Volibear is available, you counter the matchup, so we're just going to see Volibear, the diving potential, a Felios, I imagine we're going to probably see an Enchanter in the bot lane, or you can go for something like, uh, an Urgot, oh, no, not, what am I saying, not Urgot, who's the, uh, the sea man that died in that sense um nautilus there we go that's who i was meaning yes that's that's who i'm expecting here and look at that i'm predicting it all mate wait no that's not happening i mean it would be an enchanter and also i was just gonna say right so if you just said the whole draft what am i supposed to talk about right now but no actually it is going to be the action oh, for toll 2 um presumably um, I mean, this is really ballsy. You're going to put your... He's he's put himself into a counterpick matchup. And okay, so I actually really like this. because This is something I wanted to bring up. And Kanatsu is one of the few players I think can do it. LS was very recently on his stream and broadcast uh, when he was uh, watching some LCK. He was of the opinion that um, in actuality, in a lot of spots, you should just play Rise Top. You should just play Rise top. A lot of his matchups are better. A lot of his itemization is already effective against most top lane champions. And hey, if people want to go ranged versus you, just play ranged and just play. If, if people want to play Akshan top lane, fine. I'll just play Rise top lane. I'll just clear with two buttons and then rotate around my jungle camp. By the way, you can do golems really quickly with Rise. So I love this angle. I don't think we're going to have it, but it doesn't make sense otherwise to pick your mid laner when your opponents just pick the junk, the top laner. So uh, that's that's the angle I'm doing with. Obviously, though, they could be both going mid. I don't want Mega Min playing it. So we'll have to see. Bans came through, though. What do you think of this Camille and Ari being banned and this, and this um, weird top lane rise I've uh, pitched to you? I would enjoy to see the top lane rise. I do think Bans at least indicate it is most likely going to be going over to the mid lane. And yeah. uh, I think Axis are of the same opinion, taking away the Camille and that Renekton here. Nautilus is an interesting ban, however, when you have Aphelios and Akshan, who... Well, Akshan does have technically what? a mobility. Uh, you, I mean, screw that point, you have a Rel locked in. I mean, it was one of Reiner's best champions. He hasn't really looked good since really Rel fell out of meta set as well, when they were a fantastic support champion. Reiner has struggled, and I mean, I guess maybe Hawks are just going, hey, let's just go full comfort into this one let's get players on champions that they really feel good on and i mean marble on the jinx reiner on the rel that is for sure comfort mode for the side of the fukuoka soft bank hawk marble had a fantastic performance in academy when he was playing jinx and reiner going back to that v3 comfort the response though from axis the nautilus being banned away as i mentioned so they decide to go with the alistair and it's going to be a mid pick up. I imagine it's going to be a control mage. The X is not the one I was expecting because this looks like it's dive, dive, dive city for Axis. It absolutely is. Vex together with the Alistar and the Zin. Um, I suppose, you know, it, it does work pretty well with the composition. Akshan yep. and Aphelios. I can't imagine they will have too much trouble following it up now, though. I, I feel like the whole combo of Hawks hinges on this last pick. And with the Aatrox... Oh that what is an odd one okay i've got like four question mark pings going across me here why 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 are we picking aatrox into action i wish i could answer that question okay i am trying to theory craft the reasoning if you think it's a felios top maybe that's why um because with the chains, you can definitely do it, but Akshan literally can just grapple out of your chain, so that doesn't make sense. So, I... No, you know what? I hate the pick. I'm just gonna call it as it is, mate. I'm gonna mm -hmm. call it as it is. I don't so even want to be on camera at this point. No, Reed, <laughs> go back to the Japanese cards. I don't want... I don't know what to do. Okay, uh, I'm going to attempt to theorycraft my way out of this, right, maybe unsuccessfully. Uh, so what it looks like, you've got Rice, you've got Aatrox, you've got two people that want to be on side lanes most likely later on in the game. Uh, yes. And so that looks like a 1-3-1 setup. Now, you can put Rice into the Akshan, 
okay. late game, yeah. and then just try and have Aatrox on the other side of the map. Now, whether that will work in practice, probably not. How will it work in laning phase? I have no idea, but it's there. Why not just pick a champion that just beats Akshan from level 1 to level 18? Because just... that would be the smart thing to do. Why not just pick Fiora? Just, just, just win the matchup. Okay, yeah. all right. So we're both on the same page. You're just, you're just copiuming it up a bit more because oh, you yeah, want, yeah, yeah. you, you want the exciting match for Hawks to win this match. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, if Hawks win mm -hmm. this match, they get put to one and one, and then we actually get the exciting one. Because if Axis don't win another game, which is not unreasonable, because they've done some pretty spicy stuff, and if the Hawks don't win another game, they're tied. That means that their double, their triple round robin, that last matchup between the two of them is super important, even, especially if both of them pick up a win over V3 Esports. Yeah. Uh, I, I think also a useful way, at least that I put it in, is if Hawks lose this match, in the upcoming 10 matches, they will have to win, win three more games than Axis. That, that is the matchup huge. between those two teams. But, you know, both of them probably going to beat V3. Both of them probably going to lose to DFM. Where are those ups upsets coming from? We'll have to see. And I mean, the Hawks have drafted more standard than Axis in this one. There's a lot more kind of spice coming out. Mega Minute playing on that Vex again. We've seen it a few times and it's, it's not been fantastic. But, I mean, this is pseudo control mage pseudo assassin -y, So I'm kind of more online with it because Mega Min was an assassin player far more ad wise um but assassin may more melee mid i miss his bruiser mids i miss his renekton's dude like i just i just want him back on renekton duty but we're, we're not allowed to see that renekton's the Megumin, the uh, Megumin. <laughs> give me the old Megumin. I oh god i love the smash references man uh, but at this moment in time we've got told to and kinatsu um doing the action versus aatrox that Kanatsu picked himself. Well, yeah, what did you expect was going to happen, Kanatsu? Yeah, I think this is basically just a preview of the matchup for the next 11 levels. Or am I even copying here? Um, I mean, probably the whole game. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm. This is. I can't. I can't do. Sometimes you just get mental boomed by a pick, and in all honesty. All we can hope is that Mar Kanatsu plays really good weak side. The reason he didn't play Orn is still besides me, is this is what you want to do. So then, yeah, I mean, you just scale up and you have better team fights, at least. Yeah, like, that, that's, that's that's the idea. Then I think that's what Blitzkrank Sound is also saying as well. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, scale, Rise Jinx, they're pretty good when it comes to late game damage, and... Um, Okay, you know what? No, I thought I had a point about the range, but then realized there's Akshan Aphelios on the other team, so never mind that one. Oh, no, yeah, they don't have range. They just have better team. <laughs> I don't even know what this match is. Oh, I hope Reiner. I hope Reiner. So, I mean, a lot of this comes down to how does Blank play this matchup in the early game? You can see him already parving. He's done almost a full clear on his bot side, so now he's rotating around. He's getting golems, and I mean, hey, this is definitely a spot where if... Pole 2 doesn't have vision, which, guess what? He doesn't. He's going to have to run on his jungler. Swamp is coming up, but look at this. Blank's already there. That's the flash forward and the swing around from Tall 2. Uh, unfortunate engage here. Okay, Reiner is mid lane, I guess. Mega Min will flash over the wall. Dasher follows through for the first blood. All right, guess what? Jungler tries it, doesn't work out. Reiner will try the flash forward, and it does work out. Dasher decides to follow, flash, trade it, and hey, it works out. And because of the assistance that also came topside, they're able to get a bit more farm going for Kanatsu. He's got nine farm, eh? He's got ten now. But this is what's really important. It's Reiner, it's the flash forward, and it's the fact that they get so much CC onto Mega Min. Look at this fantastic setup from Dasher. He's able to flash forward so they can get the stun there, and it's beautifully comboed by the side of the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks, and that's what you need to get going if your top side is uh, not having a great time that they pick themselves into. Yeah, Reiner just says, look at me. I'm the jungler now. And uh, gets a kill over to Dasher, which, you know, is definitely in the right direction for the Hawks. We have had the reservations about how Dasher can convert that, but that is still in the future. And now, Reiner going in yet again onto Sanctu, forces the flash away, but the headbutt 
onto blank from Dicey means that the gank is dead in the waters. Again, the top lane of Kinado is going to be tanked by the boomerang and told to takes the kill and easy as that. Yeah, and the side of Hawks have absolutely nothing to do to this because Axis, no, guess what? I don't have anything to clear in the, uh, anything to fear rather in this scenario because I know exactly where your your jungler is. He just showed up bot side, so I can now go in on this top side because I know it's absolutely safe to do so. And this is just them unloading absolutely everything. Very early ignite gets thrown down by Toll Two, but it makes total sense. The ignite tick is what actually gives it over, and you want more gold going onto this action. You don't need to put it onto this in. If action just gets like a full item completion, that mythic first coming in, which is probably going to be a kraken slayer, I imagine, uh, versus the damage profile that the hawks have got. It's just going to be so difficult for Hawks ever to get onto this action. He's going to deal so much damage. And now we get to see what really is the game plan here for them. Black steals all of them. Wow. All right. Touche. Touche. I respect it. I respect the hustle. Yeah. Man, up. man ain't Thanks happy that his uh, top laner died, I guess. Absolutely furious, I would go as far as to say. It is going to start this dragon. Mm-hmm. Just commit for it. I mean, there's no vision from Axis in the river, and bot lane is stable. Dasher has slight priority in mid lane, so I guess it does make sense. Yeah, and this is first dragon, and um, one of these... Axis is on a huge first dragon team. Uh, they have okay stats around it, but these are two teams that are far more, similar to our previous matchup, far more concerned with the Heralds as well. So, I mean, I think it's worth us saying that this is just blank kind of understanding the parving um, and also understanding that where where the enemy jungler was. They knew Zinzao was topside, so he's probably going to have to clear his jungle before he can rotate around. Uh, both of them are now going to be rotating, clearing their top side so they can get prepared and put their vision down for this Herald, which is going to be coming up in about minute 40. So, that's the effectiveness of trying to play around as much as possible of the map control, vision control. And Hawks have got the nameplates where they should be more experienced doing this. So it's good to see they're doing this. Kanatsu finding the chains on to Akshan. But this is what I mentioned going into the loading of the game. Unless it's the Aphelios top, Toll 2 can just grapple out whenever he wants. And he just showed it perfectly there. I'm still really perplexed by this uh this pick why why would you do this why would kanatsu do this i i really want twitch chat to flame me out because i'm missing something obvious but i can't think of it i mean if we're missing something here then well first of all it's both of us but second of all it's a learning experience i guess uh <laughs> so we are going to find out how good that Aatrox pick is this game going to the base picking up fuel caps defensive itemization here from kanadu which again when you all want. Uh, I mean, I just, I just love this from Rhino. No, oh. no, 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 bro, you, you can't do that. Well, he, he, he kind of did it. He kind of did it. Marble's getting most of it, so I mean, I mean, the thought was that. Out. Yeah, the, the love, the idea. Marble was able to be mostly getting all of the CS, and I mean, what, what is surprising is that Rhino has actually got six, but that's because remember he's got that assist. Marble wasn't going mid for obvious reasons. He was collecting his wave in bot lane and resetting. And when we look to the damage, small advantages have definitely started to come out for the Hawks. They found some of those early kills. They played around the map slightly better. Small gold. And it's important to obviously notice the placement of that gold because obviously most of it is going to be more in the top side for Axis, who got more gold, whereas obviously it's more spaced around for the side of the Hawks with mid and bot. Now Herald is going to be the target for the Hawk Swamp doing a bit of innovating in the meantime. There's no one defending this tower, which, well, good play because your entire bot side jungle is under the control of Swamp and Dicey. Uh, but it does mean that Sanctu gets, that's the second we played, we're going for the third one. That is going to be a lot of gold on the Aphelios. Yeah, it's going to be a huge amount funneled into them. Um, and I mean, this is just the side of Axis just going, yeah, I'm just not going to play into the first Herald. Like, there's just no reason for us to do so. And they actually went for a really deep invade onto the bot side of the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks. We saw Swamp uh, going very deep with Dicey. The problem is they didn't really find much, and Kanazu's now getting engaged on. Here comes Black Flash stun into the dunk, and it's a well-executed gank at that. Kanazu takes the kill. Yeah, and I honestly, I was a little bit like, ooh, really? We're, we're using Flash? We're throwing so much into this with the ult and everything else? 
I didn't realize Kanatsu could get burned down that quickly by an Akshan, and I completely respect it, and I love the idea and the amount of committal that they went for this, because, yeah, you need to put Kanatsu into a spot where it's not going to just die. Probably going back to get a Bramble Vest. No, actually, just going straight for the Ruby. Okay, so we're actually going for, um... Why is this... Bill, yeah, I guess it has to be a, a, a gore drinker, right? Which is, I don't, I don't hate it. I just would have preferred going in for that second tanky item, dissuading Toll Two from making these trades because actually getting burnt in a few spots like this would be the more effective way for Kanatsu to play it. But I mean, blank just plays it here. Uh, yeah, I would, I would just want the Bramble Vest. I'm just a Bramble Vest um, subscriber, I guess is the way to think about it. And then, and then after you've built your Bramble Vest with your shoes, with your Ninja Tabbies, afterwards go all in on getting that gold drinker oh yeah absolutely i mean it's you know there's a reason why there's a joke well i don't know if it's even a joke at this point that the full build for tank in the top lane against ad is just steel caps bramble vest yeah that's um, it because it just works so damn well yeah it, and, it, and at most it just dissuades the poking and trading that typically happens from these range matchups because it's not normally enough to kind of this way like kind of out Oh, God, no. The words just aren't coming to me here, mate. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the poke does not benefit the overall outcome because you don't get enough damage down, and normally what the tank heals up nullifies what you're trying to do. So it just doesn't really work out, and normally you end up being the slight um, dissuade. I didn't... Oh, my God. That's such a huge wave. Kinatsu would love some jungle help from Blank here to honestly, like, crash this wave in and almost this way, uh, push him off, and... Guess who's got ultimate coming up? So, I mean, it's an option, but God, I didn't realize Akshan was so good at clearing from range. That's like he's a ranged champion or something. Yeah, huh. no, almost as if the abilities also are pretty damn good at wave clear when you start picking up some of that AD. Yeah. Now, Swamp World started the dragon is an ocean. Uh, you see, it would be very disappointing if it's a Cloud Soul because both Infernal and Hextech are potential. We'll find out the build path of this but look at toll 2 he's just going invisible and it's just hopeful that something here but that rift herald that they were able to secure so long ago for blank they're doing this but they set it up really weirdly so they both have to pull off of the turret oh god this is horribly done honestly by the side of the hawks they could have had first dragon uh first turret easily okay no blank going for the repeat instead is going to take the kill so it works out in the end but only because swamp is in the bot side and now we have to compare what Hogs got in the top lane with what axes are getting down there in bot, and that is going to be the first tower picked up by Sanctu. Huge mistake from the side of the Hawks. It was almost a guaranteed first turret into this top side, and a huge amount of gold coming onto Blank and more so Kanatsu. They didn't set it up in a perfect way, so ultimately it's just kind of led to the side of Axis and more than importantly, Sangchu has had so much gold. You highlighted it earlier, Kashka, with the gold plating that he was getting down there. The amount of gold put into this Aphelios must be just honestly, just everything being funneled into them. And when it comes to playing these team fights, which we know Axis always love to do, these 3v kind of 3v3s, 4v4s, having one person in a side lane, Toltu is definitely going to be the benefactor of that one. And it is going to be an Eclipse sean now that i mention it what is going on also second cull coming out for sangshu cull number two i he man wants to farm man likes gold he does indeed i mean who doesn't uh every, AD play, every adc player does now something that i do also want to point out is that dasher is getting significantly ahead in this mid lane if you look at the farm you know also having a kill the real question is, will this be the game where he is able to translate it over to the rest of his team? Oh, what, an Aphelios translating their gold around? No, no, I mean Dasher. The, oh, Dasher. Um, yeah, yeah. That's a fair point, because, yeah, he is probably the richest person in this game outside of maybe Sangchu. And, I mean, Dasher is on a fantastic champion to have a lot of gold in, right? He's got those first mythics coming through. Kanatsu also has that gold drink because the amount of gold that was put into him. But uh, look at this. Swamp wants to potentially look at something, but they don't have a tanky frontline. And you know that Kanatsu can just throw down that ultimate. Dasher was able to rotate around to this bot side. So it, it, it's still playing around the fact that these two teams have got very strong members. A lot of gold injected onto them. Dasher just hasn't been put into a spot. We haven't actually seen a spicy realm warp, so... 
until we see some of these things, I'm actually of the opinion that this just favors Axis at this moment in time. Probably. There is a 3,000 gold lead, so at least raw stats-wise, we have a solid advantage to the Hawks. The second We're Herald will be gracing us just in 10 seconds. We'll see whether this one has any attention and if it's utilized more, let's say, effectively. Than yeah, absolutely. One. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you can kind of pull it down to being like, well, some of the reason that there is just a 3k gold lead is there's a 30 CS difference in mid, which is something we kind of expected. Dasha mm -hmm. has been having fantastic time doing a lot of this farming, and a, a huge other part of this is that a lot of gold just went through turret plating, right? Like, Hawk's got an extra yeah. one, so that's another 160 gold. It's probably onto Dasha, so that's where that's going as well, because there was one in mid. Not, none were taken mid for the side of them, but that's what the Hawks want fight for this second Rift Herald. They got number one. Axis look to be wanting to contest for number two as Mega Man comes in. Yeah, the Shadow Surge is available. Herald down to three and a half thousand. It's gonna reset very soon. Yep, there we go. The shell is gonna go back to the lair and uh, the 5v5 standoff is going to result Well, Axis now going for the Herald and instead Dasher pushing out mid, seeing if maybe Hawks can look for the tower. Dicey forced to flash away. Ryan and Kanatu on the front side. Shadow Surge connects onto Dasher. Here comes Mega Man. Finds the fear. Goes for the Enfrost and Rhino with a massive magnet storm. Axis just melt in the wake of their Hawks and they will take the fight and the Herald. All right, Ryan, go back to just playing Rail every single time, okay? Because this champion might not be meta, but guess what? Meta does not define the player. It does not define who you are and your team. And I mean, Axis be damned. The Hawks looking strong and looking to actually shore up this head-to-head -head record. This was fantastic. But yeah, I'm going to just look at Reiner. This is the Reiner cam show. Look at him. He's waiting for it. Sees his whole team. Magnet storms in. Gets three of the members. Secures them down. Double stun as well. That's the fantastic thing about this. And then afterwards, I mean, Blank just comes in for the old done and that was all the damage what can you do that was saying she wasn't even included in it but when there's that much damage coming down and so much cc coming through you just gotta panic and do what you can and reiner take a bow because that was something i expected from you from day number one and i'm glad it's only taken 11 days to get there because guess what this is only the halfway point books let's see if you can keep cooking with gas this game is looking promising. It is 5,000 gold lead. They will take the first Infernal Dragon right now. And I mean, Dasher just got so much gold here. Three more kills on this ride. Yeah. Fimble Winter completed two items. Right, that's oh. your game to carry, Dasher. Like, you have to carry this one. Yeah, and not only that, I don't think it's on just Dasher to do this. He's now got the item mm -hmm. set up. Let's make sure that now Kinatsu does get some more gold on him. It's important. Toltu has not um prevented kanatsu from being as fed as he should be because let's yeah. be real here kanatsu having 150 gold um, 150 farm at 17 minutes in is way more than he should have he should not have that much farm and if anything toltu should have a lot more farm he should not have 140 he should have more like 170 gold so uh, 170 cs yeah. so like if you look at like the small things here axis the threads are starting to flail a little bit you need to burn those those threads or you're going to start falling apart a lot faster than you want to and that 5k gold lead that the hawks have been able to um be the benefactors of haven't actually found it yet so marble's going to start to become an issue when he gets his second mythic he's actually finished that cull so he's just got to sell it in to get get more of that gold going and as it stands i think if hawks want to play this game around the dragons i think that's a rather effective way of doing it because 10 minutes from now will be around the 30 minute mark and I mean, it'll be faster of an average game for them. So, I mean, that we take the small wins for the Hawks here, because, I mean, they have not been looking great, Kashka. No, I mean, their two wins come from V3, only, as yeah. far as I am aware. And they have the longest average game time, the longest game time this split. It's, uh, they're good at stalling the games, but they aren't ever really that great at winning. And mid-game, it's where things sometimes fall, well, tend to fall apart. This flash was forced from Dasher here. That's not good. Yeah. Well, I, I think about the benefits of, of blowing a flash like that. Blowing a random summoner like that, it means Dasher can't flash forward or flash out of a play when when the side of Axis engage onto them. So when it comes to actually doing a team fight, I mean, the side of Axis are actually pretty happy with that. Dasher also wants to play side lane. Well, what about if we say, no, you're not allowed to side lane because we're going to just brute force somebody, send two people, and we'll try and f cut you off. 
As it stands, though, we'll have to see if Dasher is going to be punished for that because, in reality, the resets came out and it benefits the Hawks. Yeah, they are just continuing with their trajectory for the time being. The Baron mm. is going to be up in 40. And this is a Jinx of Helios game, but I somehow don't feel like we are going to see too much action around that objective early on. Death Stance is now picked up by Kinatu. We've got well, Dasher going for the tank rise build. I, I think you raise a really interesting point because while I agree with you, I don't think they, they they will be going for this. We have got multiple champions in this game who can burst down uh, a Baron particularly quickly, especially on the side of Axis when you consider Aphelios, Xin Zhao, and Akshan. These are really carries that can melt global objectives, especially when they get like two to three items deep. So we're just going to have to be worried on the side of the Hawk side. If they leave an objective open for 30 seconds, there is a chance that they could go for it. And it looks like Tolti wants to find Megum or Dasher here with Megumin. Remember, no flash on Dasher, but he is a tanky boy and teleport is being channeled by Kanatu Megumin. Now caught out in the alcove, will be looking to play around that Blasco. Meanwhile, Blank taking down Tall 2 Megumin falls to Dasher. And Axis looked for a pick in the top side, but they will be greatly disappointed as they lose two members and maybe even this Baron. And I mean, hugely well played by the side of Dasher there. Yeah, he doesn't have uh, Flash anymore, but he's got Phase Rush. Was able to proc it very quickly, masterfully played, preventing Toll 2 from collapsing onto him. And I mean, that's just going to be a Aaron. And yes, fantastic. You're able to secure some pressure in mid, but the Realm Warp here will prevent you from doing any more of that. And God, Hawk look like a completely different team this game, Kashka. And I am so pleased that they have found something to work for them this game. But the phase rush as we come into this is what really changes it. The stun coming out immediately. Look at that damage thrown out. And because he's able to reposition in a way that is effective, when Mega Man comes into fear, he can't actually place the fear in a way that, in an angle that he wants to. So they're just able to collapse and get everything. And what what else could the out of axis done i don't actually know the novels just kind of capitulated and kind of got collapsed on and hawks look really good i'm really impressed yeah i, I mean i just have to check the script because i did not expect hawks to be the team holding <laughs> a 9000 gold advantage at 22 minutes i mean where was this team for the first half of this play like they look decisive they know the place they're going for blank is doing things i <laughs> You, you don't have to call the guy out like that, but I mean, eh, I mean, Frozen Heart now also coming in for uh, the side of Dasher as well. But look at this, Swamp's going in. Yeah, but Dasher just has the Fimble Winter Everfrost stops the engage, and here comes oh, Rhino know. with the re engage. Marble takes the first kill to five, picks up the double, there comes the dunk, and Blank looking for the stun toll to put in place. And two more rockets will do it with a triple kill for Marble, the sole point for Hawks and. 10,000 gold lead at 20 minutes. This was the Hawks, ladies and gentlemen, that we believed in at the beginning of the split. This was the version of the Hawks we thought we could see. And yes, while let's actually start looking at the nameplates and going, okay, Axis, maybe not the strongest showing this game, but hey, Axis have very much pushed other teams in the LJL. The fact that the Hawks are pushing them and looking this good this early on in the game, this is 22 minutes. Axis, Hawks don't do this at 22 minutes. This is what Axis do. This is what DFM do. This is what Burning Core do. Hawk, Rascal, Jester. Hawks, you haven't done this before. And I must say, I am very happy to see this. You just need to close this game out now. Because if you don't close this game out in the next eh, five minutes... There are going to be some questions going around this game. And I think if there's going to be a team that's going to find a way of extending a game five more minutes for just silly reasons, Axis are one of those teams I believe could do that. For sure. And uh, yeah, I'm going to save the overreactions for if Hawks end up closing this out. Because I agree with you, they have a huge goal lead. It's 11,000. That but is stomp territory. Yes. Uh, by all metrics. But they yeah. still need to get the Nexus. Four and a half thousand uh, Baron power play. It's great. We love to see that. You've got two and a half yeah. items on Marble, three and a half, well, three and a bit on Dasher. And uh, Kinatu, two and a half as well. Yeah. This is looking like the Hawks, like the super team I was sold at the beginning of this. Yeah, this, 
absolutely it is and it feels like it's a positive trajectory for the hawks we we wanted to see this we started seeing them playing better over the last kind of really week we've seen them kind of improving we've just never seen them quite cross the finish line their match versus v3 esports was a was a defining changing point the issue was for a lot of us and, and especially us two cash because we came into this match it was like they look good against v3 but what does that actually mean turns out a lot more because in this match hawks have looked gone from strength to strength and as as long and we will continue to say this as long as they close it out in a time effective manner i'm happy i'm very happy with them they could have probably ended it off that baron play previously crack the base get an inhib really put the game into um just kind of it's over territory for axis but as it currently stands i'm very happy with how this game is set Let's see how cleanly the Hawks end. And yeah. with Baron coming up in two minutes, I would love to see them set up all their vision, collapse it, make it horrible for the side of Axis to ever try and come into their own jungles, and then play around the kind of vision objective advantage that they have. Absolutely. And to, yeah, given the kind of performance that Hawks had in the first 10 games, like baby steps. Mm. They don't need to absolutely stone this game yet. We want them to finish it, preferably with the next Baron. Yeah. Um, but... You know, the fact that they didn't so far, I wouldn't worry about it too much now. Let's see, Rhino is setting up Vision very aggressively. We have seen some very good engages and Hex Flash is available. It's being channeled over the wall. Never mind. Just no out of this play. I mean, I currently love what the side of the Hawks are doing at the moment. If you look at where Kanatsu is, he's just farming the butt side of the jungle of Axis. And he's just pushing the lane in, resetting now. He has got that TP. You know what's coming up in 1 minute 30. It's going to be an Infernal Dragon. That's going to be sold for the side of the Hawks. And I actually, you know what I'd love to see? Vision control from Hawks on top side of River. And you can actually already see it as they actually buy some wards now. And some wards are actually expiring, getting replaced. I love the fact because they've controlled the top side of Axis Jungle. They're now going to rotate around. Time to get the Dragon control on the bot side. And you know what? We've already got some deep wards, so we'll have a really good idea on the side of what Axe are doing. Kanatsu, though, you're getting pretty far forward. I was a little bit worried. Dicey looked like he might be uh, going for a move there and told he was invisible. But what? Hawks do not have to force this Baron. They can just take soul if they want to and then play around uh, the Baron afterwards. So let's see what they do. What do you want them to do, Kashka? I mean, honestly, the jungle is dark for Axis. I, I think there is definitely a case for Hawks to just go for this Baron. If they see Axis move, you know, turn on them, make sure you don't get destroyed by Megumin. But no, there is zero response. They will just take the Baron for free, which will mean Axis get their first setup on this dragon. Not how I was expecting this, because if Axis don't fall, yeah, because they, they give this over, it's like, okay, you can now put deep vision in fantastic the problem is if hawks just stay grouped you do not win the 5v5 they are just so much further ahead of you and they're also do they even have to play around the dragon soul like they don't actually have to if they don't want to so uh this is a interesting choice and uh reiner has found Toto. Oh, forces the flash away, interrupts the recall, and here comes Blank with the stun, and that's the kill. Top laner down, 4v5, Hawks are going to turn towards the dragon, the soul in their size. They've got the Baron, they've got the Infernal Soul, just take the resets, guys, and let's see if they can wrap it up. You can't get any more than this, and I'm not quite sure what Axis were doing, because if you looked at the minimap when Toll 2 got found... His whole team were in the base. So I don't really know what Axis thought they were going to do. Uh, yeah, this just feels like we have a bit of um, miscommunication kind of coming through for the side of Axis. I mean, when you're this far behind 13k at 28 minutes, game's pretty much over in a lot of scenarios. Um, so if you can find random ways back into this game, fantastic. If you can't, don't worry too much about it. Hawks. How are we going to end this game? We're going to do an old J-Ram or we're going to do something else at this moment in time. It actually doesn't look like we're going to do a J-Ram. We're going to just go to the top side, maybe play through vision. Guys, you've got Baron. Mm. Just brute force them. You've got 13k more gold. You are just so much richer. Like you, you have the money. You have the items. Like Marvel has an extra pickaxe just over, just in raw advantage over Sang Chu. Like they should just be forcing these stuff. 
absolutely shoot one for is going to be the call with Kanatu being left to push mid lane. That <laughs> is music to my ears saying that sentence. And uh, yeah, the top lane tier 2 is going to fall down. Inhibitor Towers now are going to be the target. Rhyna has Flash, has Magnet Storm. That is the fear gone from Megamin. Uh, it is going to be recharging pretty fast thanks to all those procs for the passive. And mid lane Inhibitor Tower almost done. If not this way, if you have to imagine on the next one, Kanatu will be able to get this. And this is just textbook siege from Hawks. Yeah, and think about the timers now. It's it's 30 minutes, so I mean, Baron, uh, well, Baron minions are going to always have a cannon minion, so it's going to be just extra sieging power for the side of the Hawks. They waited a bit longer on this Baron. They, they were patient, but guess what? They are rewarded, and that is the first turret going down, and you know where that pressure is going to be because Kanatsu can now be in the base of Axis whenever he wants to. Yeah. And the blank goes over the wall. He's looking for the dive. The turret has been disabled. Blank thrown to the backside of the fight. Here comes Rhyna. Oh. Oh, he detonates Axis on the spot. And that Panda. is a quadra kill in it. Give him the Panda. Man. Give him. Come on. Do it. Marble. He will not be able to get it. But Hawks will take the win over Axis. 30 minutes, shorter than average, shorter than most, and they will even up the head-to-head, -head. they will even up the standings. The super team, I welcome them back. One and all, if you called yourself a non-believer, you made that known rather early on. The Fukuoka SoftBank Hawk Gaming pick up their first win over Axis and a much well-needed one huge from the side of Hawks. I am so pleased and honestly i i gotta say kashka a lot of members of the team stepped up that one rhino's my mvp yeah. rhino's my mvp oh he's back has boys. to be has to be i um, thought that was rail engages the two moments that pretty much i think define the game for hawks here both on the top of, of his back i mean blank definitely helped him to stop the die for the last time but it was rhino who pulled the trigger Man, I am happy. I, I'm also excited for the second half of the split because, oh boy, the race for playoffs is getting interesting. Let's compose ourselves for a moment, Cash. We must compose yeah. ourselves. Okay. Hmm. Calm down, calm down. There we do, go. Do the whole uh, Ashley Tisden thing from High School Musical 2. I can't... I can't uh, uh. I anyway, um, I'm going to stop saying pop culture references that are wicked old because we're going to go to a break. And when we come back, Brackish Brick will break it down with us what really occurred and uh, the dismantling of Axis. Hawks are back! Let's go! Tell me where do I go? Tell me where do I take us? Your heart is starting to slow May the water be safe Welcome back to the Analyst Desk, everybody. After game two, 
and Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. They show up, and Lexi, it just goes to show what they say. When it rhinos, it pours. I mean, I'm so happy that the 2020 support MVP is back on form on maybe his best champion. Uh, I don't know. Set was his, his set ultimates were mm, always on an AD carry or a mid carry every single time. The squishies. But oh my god, the Ryan, the Rello. Okay, Kashka, Brackish. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. Rel is meta now, right? For for Hawks. Uh, <laughs> yes, for Hawks. Yes. Just pick it. Just pick it. Yeah. I mean, with with a performance that good, was that I? It was two or three three man magnet storms. Which oh, at least yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that's just that's just a that's just a play this champion angle. And yeah. I do want to. I, I'm going to. I'm going to pause up at that at this point. Just put, put up a little flag, Lexi. Mm. You said in game Hawks are looking like a whole new team, and while I agree, I want to ask you this: Yes, how much of that is the genesis of the SoftBank Phoenixes, and how much of that is Axis to me looking really uncomfortable with this night and day difference between the styles of their two top laners? I would say Hold Two has been fine. He looked pretty good actually versus V3 Esports, so. Um, I'm not gonna go too deep on the angle that it was though. that, but I mean V3 Esports also put themselves in that spot. So yeah, okay, we'll look onto this matchup. I mean, honestly, they picked themselves into a really bad matchup. Did Kinatsu and the Hawks like they put themselves that into too. the Axion counter pick matchup, which blew my mind for the first 20 minutes of that game. Problem is they didn't really put a lot of stuff into Tol 2. And a constant issue Tolsu keeps having, and something we even highlight in the early game, is no vision. He just doesn't put vision down. The enemy jungler, well, Blank actually did something, as Kashka mentioned, and they won. It actually sucks for him, because um, so Tolsu didn't Blank doing didn't something have... for once. <laughs> no, so, no, no. When Tolsu, when the first gank attempt happened in top lane, when mm. Blank was able to get in, Tolsu had warded it. His ward timed out while Blank was doing Krugs. Oh no! That... So blank doing the blank doing the full clear actually was super big brain. Also, also, okay, get this right. Fuck workers on fat hawks. They let Kanatu play this play on the side. They do the one four. They push the top lane. Kanatu's pushing in mid. Yep. Guess what? Kanatu didn't build this game. The one game he was allowed to split push. I mean, yep. it was the hole breaker. It was no hole breaker. Yep. It, I mean, it kind of makes sense into the spot that he was put into, right? Like, you can't, like, oh, yeah, while, yeah. while while it is a gold-efficient item um, in a lot of scenarios, Hullbreaker only really, really, really works um, when you actually can split push. And Kinatsu, for a lot of this game, just wasn't in a spot to split push. So it right. kind of made sense to actually not go for it, even though this was a spot you, you should probably go for. It, it was a, it's a weird game, Brackish, that's for sure. It certainly was, but we can really, I mean, this is just, yeah, this game, so much of it off the back of Reiner, that fantastic setup on the mid lane, gets first blood onto Dasher, and then but this happened, and yes, like, oh, Kanatu in a bad matchup fell behind, but I do think that, I mean, obviously the Hawks were just flat winning, and Kanatu was kind of, uh, what was it, a rising wind lifts all, or a rising tide lifts all ships. It's like, okay, Hawks were winning, yeah. so Kanatu was just doing doing fine by proxy. I mean, something that me and Kashka noticed a lot throughout this game is that when it came to playing down in team fights, like Axis were not prepared to ever play a team fight, and Hawks mm -hmm. were always able to group up and played really effectively around their members. And I mean, this current play on screen is just a perfect example of that, right? Like just commitment to a play. Hawks were just on mm. the right page. And that's not something we've actually seen at all this split even throughout their wins versus v3 that wasn't them coming together that was them actually just kind of being better just point for point um and pound for pound as opposed to this game where they played far actually far more like a team exactly and i just uh, just saw that last fight that yeah this game all of the game defining fights are just off rhino landing fantastic magnet storms like mm. they may have been set up by by other people but it's still, it still was the case that uh, Reiner was 
and a huge part of finding the plays that lock that one down. So yeah, I guess Rel is meta again now, even though nobody else in the world plays it. In fact, I think one thing I saw that it got picked in LCK and did absolutely nothing. It wasn't Reiner. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't yeah, Reiner. It, yeah, that's, Reiner. Big, that's basically the point. Yeah. Okay. Any further thoughts? Because we've got two more games to get to. And of course, uh, we do have to say goodbye to the two of you uh, after that. So any any rounding off thoughts? Firstly, uh, actually, um, obviously we can't really talk about the whole... It, or rather, it would be disingenuous to flame you, Lexi, for your pre-games. Like, oh, right, like, hour-long game, gonna take forever. I mean, when it's I, it I would Axis rather be versus wrong. A completely... Yeah, it was. It, it, this was not Axis versus for Gorka Softback Hawks gaming, or at least not the one that we've seen so far in spring. So, I feel like I feel like your prediction had the the Hawks we knew shown up would have quite likely come true. But yes, they no they something happened, and we're we are just gonna have to wait and see really because this this, this is the, the thing with best of one formats. It's well, we now have to just kind of sit, hope, and pray that they can maintain this form in going, like, maintain this form going forward. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it's it's really hard to know the direction they're going. I mean, Kashka, I mean, this is the opposite of what we kind of expected, because mm -hmm. one good game against V3 doesn't mean anything. Yeah. This no, does, though. Absolutely. I think... Just, you know, to like summarize my thoughts. Hey, this is the middle of the split. This is the po the turning point for Hogs. They're going on their arc and they're going to yeah. absolutely pop off. See if it can protagonist arc. We will see if it can continue. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here for the first two games, gents. Obviously, we're going to have to say goodbye to you now. But after the break, we'll be back with two new casters, two more games. The rest of the day still to come on LGLO. You don't go anywhere.